It felt like I couldn't breathe. It just felt like I was drowning. So I'd been ill at home for a, for a week. Uh, I got took to hospital, went into the ward, and, and you're just in, a, in a, ro a room with people from all walks of life that have just got COVID. So, so normally, I suppose, in hospital, you'd be on the ward with people that have got the same sort of illness as you, whereas because of the infection situation, you know, there was old people and young people and, and all kinds of people just that had, had COVID. It was pretty, pretty desolate in there, you know, the different stages of, of, uh, of, of people being poorly. So they kept talking about intensive care and, and, and maybe having to, to go there to get, get further treatment. And then about one o'clock in the morning, a doctor came in like this space suit kind of thing with pipes all out the back, woke me up to tell me I was going to intensive care. It was just horrible knowing that if I didn't start improving, that the next, the only next step for me would be to put on a ventilator. And then you're talking, you know, weeks unconscious essentially and obviously at the time there was a lot of people that weren't coming out of, uh, off the ventilator. Wow, um, it's serious, worse than what we all thought it was um, and he deteriorated so quickly so obviously in our minds when what's what's happening when's it going to stop? I kind of made a commitment to myself that, that when I got better that I would make the most of, of every opportunity and, and sort of try and seek and seize as many adventures as possible and, and, and be fit and strong for my family when they need me. So having got out of hospital, I, um, I started walking to try and build some fitness up. And I started with a 400 metre walk, then a one kilometre walk, then a five kilometre walk. And within a week or so, I was up to sort of 5K. Um, and I just noticed a huge improvement over seven days. And it just became a bit of a, a focus for me, just seeing this improvement. So I just went for a run. I went for, a, I think, an eight kilometre run while my son played football. And, uh, and, and I literally haven't stopped since, 14 months later. So a typical day for me on a, on a run commute would be up at 4.30, out the house at 4.45, couple of hours down the canal, 22 kilometres to work, shower, full day at work, and then the opposite journey on the way back home, another 22 kilometres. A big motivator for me has become trying to sort of normalise the things that people think are insane. So, you know, getting to me getting up at 4.30 is completely normal now. And it, I don't even think twice about it when people ask me, how do you get so many miles in? How do you do so much running? It's because I do those things. To them, that's, that's crazy, it's insane. Whereas to me, it's, it's completely normal. And running over 100 kilometres each week is, is now just completely normal. I suppose thinking back to that moment in intensive care when I was at my most poorly, um, for me, that, that, that's my why, and that's why I have pushed myself so hard over the last 14, 15 months to do so many miles, to achieve so many goals, and set so many aspirational goals. And I think my message to others is, is that, you know, it shouldn't have to take something so, so desperate to, to kickstart you and, and just find, find your why and find your purpose and, and really go and get it. Something that I've learned is you don't know how strong you are until you need to be. <laughs>